This video is on voltage divider bias which is also known as self bias or emitter bias. Welcome to physics learning. In the previous video I have talked about operating point and we have seen that how operating point can change that is if the IC if there is instability in the IC then operating point will shift and we have seen that there are three factors which can change IC right to stabilize the operating point we have different types of strategy we have different types of biasing using which we can improve the stability of operating point right i have discussed about fixed bias network and there we have seen that if we try to evaluate the stability factors that is s s prime and s double prime which is mainly uh, says that how ic will change with respect to reverse saturation current vb that is voltage across base emitter junction and beta okay and in this case we have seen that stabilization against vb and beta can be improved by changing rb which is given in the circuit however however stabilization against reverse saturation current is very poor therefore sometime this kind of biasing will not work okay to improve on this biasing there are other kinds of biasing commonly use one of them which is known as voltage divider bias sometime it is called self bias or emitter bias this is the circuit diagram of a voltage divider bias which is also known as self bias or emitter bias before going into mathematical details let me explain physically how it is working let's suppose by any means there is increase in ic then what will happen then the current in the re will automatically increase because current through re is ib plus ic so if ic will increase current in the resistance re will automatically increase as a result it will increase the voltage drop across re once the voltage drop across re will increase it will automatically decrease the forward bias of emitter junction as a result base current will decrease and we know that ic is proportional to ib so if ib will decrease it will automatically decrease the ic right so this circuit is self stabilizing itself increase in ic will lead this cascading effect and automatically ic will decrease therefore this circuit is also known as self bias okay everything happening due to current passing through re that is the voltage drop across re will getting feedback and this re is emitter resistance that is why it is also known as emitter bias okay so now move on to detail of this circuit to do the mathematical analysis we need to simplify it okay if you want to calculate ic let's simplify it so that we can easily calculate ic as we will deal the circuit for the ac signals then capacitor will be short circuited for the ac and this vcc that is voltage and this voltage is connected to both rc and r2 so now just make it separate okay now just redraw this circuit okay same configuration but we want to redraw if you redraw it just make r2 looks like parallel to r1 okay and now if you look at this redrawing then you can easily see that in the base side there is r1 and r2 is in parallel so we can convert this input side by using thevenin network theorem which will look like this here this voltage will be replaced by vth and the r1 and r2 will be replaced by rt okay this is simple thevenin norton theorem where rt that is thevenin resistance is r1 r2 upon r1 plus r2 because r1 and r2 is in parallel so equivalent resistance in the input side is rt and vth is the thevenin voltage which will be equals to vcc r2 upon r1 plus r2 if you know the thevenin network theorem it will be very easy to understand and it is very easy to calculate once we have this simplified circuit we can easily calculate rb 
just by applying KVL around the base circuit. So voltage drop across RT plus voltage drop across base emitter junction plus voltage drop across RE will be equals to VTH, right? So from this relation, you can calculate IB, which will look like this, okay? Now, once you know IB, you can calculate IC. We know there is a direct relation between IC and IB. IC is equals to beta IB plus beta plus 1 ICO. Substitute the IB here and you will finally get this relation. Okay. We will going to use this relation to evaluate the stability factors. Okay. So the first stability factor which is S that is change in IC with change in reverse saturation current. Del IC upon del ICO. This will be equals to beta plus 1 upon 1 plus beta RE upon RT plus RE. If you look at this expression carefully, then if you choose RE much much greater than RT, then this expression will tends to 1, right? Therefore, I can say if you increase RE, your stabilization against reverse saturation current will improve, okay? Second one is S prime, which will be equals to del IC upon del VPE, and this will be equals to minus beta upon RT plus RE plus beta RE. So from this expression also, if you choose RE much much greater than RT, then this expression will be approximately equals to beta upon RE. So if you increase RE, S prime will decrease, and our motive is to lower the stability factor. Okay. Thus, we can say stability against reverse saturation current and VB can be improved by choosing high value of RE compared to RT. Now, the third one is S double prime. If you evaluate S double prime, which is equals to del IC upon del beta, you will get this big expression. Okay. If you look at this expression carefully, the beta is in denominator. So, if you choose high value of beta, S double prime will decrease. Thus, what we can say that stabilization against VBE and ICO can be improved by using high value of RE. However, if you want to improve the stabilization against beta, then you need to choose transistor with high value of beta. Okay. We have seen that in the fixed bias, there is stabilization against ICO was very poor. That can be taken care in this circuit. Okay. So, obviously, voltage divider bias is better biasing compared to the fixed bias. However, fixed bias circuit is very easy to construct, very simple circuit. Okay. So, hope voltage divider bias or cell bias is clear to you. See you in the next video. Till then, thank you.